Hey everyone, Daryl here. Welcome to episode 9 of the Fantasy Disc Golf League. I'm joined as always by my ever-lovely co-host, Jeremy. How are you doing? Oh, thanks. Lovely, hey? <laughs> I'm doing just fantastic. I got one win under my belt these days. I've been carrying that around like above my head <laughs> like a champion. You can dine, on out, dine out on that forever, Jeremy. You got one win at least. At least you didn't get skunked. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, episode 9, Dismania Open. As always, we have our special guest with us. And we figured it was a little bit late in the season, but we had to get the man who's actually sponsoring the fantasy episodes, Brendan McKinstry. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Daryl. Thanks for having me on. Good. Welcome back to the podcast. You were a former guest on the regular podcast. Now you're on the fantasy episodes. How do you feel? How does your how's your fantasy game? Uh, usually not very good. When it comes to hockey, I usually <laughs> uh, stop paying attention about two thirds of the way through the year. But this one is <laughs> only about half an hour, so maybe I can make it through half an hour of the show. There you go. Yeah. And, and I would say, as an Alberta uh, person here, living in the fine province of Alberta, how do you feel about your picks for the Maritimes and Quebec? <laughs> How do you feel about your knowledge on those disc golfers? Um, not very high. I've seen a little bit on Instagram, and I have been there in person uh, before I got really into disc golf. I don't know if that helps. Oh, but maybe, yeah. uh, maybe, maybe you haven't touched that, touched that red soil. Help me out with my picks today. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's the thing that we always say. You know, this one probably more so than others, Jeremy. All the time we're doing these fantasy episodes, we're getting to know these new players, people that we haven't. Um, necessarily heard of before we're give, giving them the spotlight we're giving all these players um, the chance to people to follow them on disc golf scene if they're paying attention to our picks or as you like to say if they've left their own made if they've made their own team they would have gone into disc golf scene they've seen all the players to pick from not a lot of players that we've heard of this week or this no, episode I there's only a couple, but it's that's one of the exciting parts about it is getting to learn about new players. We did that as we went through some of those Ontario tournaments where we hadn't heard of these people, and then we're looking and we're we're meeting or at least getting introduced to new Canadian players and even American players who are coming up for these events. So it's mm -hmm. kind of good because it's putting our breadth of knowledge of the Canadian pro scene. It's just making it better every time. Yeah. And, and the fact that we've seen these players and you know how well they play, maybe next season you'll do better. Oh, yes. Ouch. There's always there a barb to be thrown my way. <laughs> always. So we Lots should just mention... next year, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Maybe so we should to... mention that with a bit of a slim down field, if people um, would recall the Dismania Open from last year, where Ella and Eagle took down the wins... The depth of field is not as great this year. Um, for the MPO side, we're still going to be picking our three players each. Um, but again, like some other tournaments we've done this year, we're just going to be picking the one FPO player. Right. And I think too, Daryl, is I know that PEI had some weather that had gone through and damaged some of the courses there. But this right. year, the event is being held at Kings Pine Disc Golf Park in Mount Stewart, PEI. That's right. where uh, the tournament's going to be. Yeah, awesome. But before we get on to this episode, we should just do a quick recap of what happened in the last episode of the Fantasy League. I think I'm shooting for a tie here. Maybe I can tie up Daryl. Yeah, it's close. It's close with the guest. Jeremy yeah. is a little bit far behind, but... Well, you know, I going to take a little page here out of Jordan Alway's book here and he is organizing the Cole Garden Cup and he gave like three times points <laughs> at the end of his event right. for the last one maybe, so I, I don't know I'm going to I'm going to try to angle ten times points or something like that <laughs> out of Daryl if I think I can. For this event or for the last event? Last one. Yeah for the last event. 
Maybe if the last event was Canadian Nationals, it's hard to just pick one random A tier and give it all the credit. But yeah, that's, that's true. That's a good point. So let's retroactively, because I did well on that one. Ten <laughs> times the points at Nationals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Let me let me do the math. Let me work it out and see if I can still win. Yeah. So because you did, because if you watched the last episode with uh, Tim Plamond and we had the the double episode, we had the Innova Rip and Nationals. You tied Tim. For nationals, I tied Tim for the rip. Team shambles seems like such a misnomer at this point. Exactly. It was given to me, really. It was given to me on, on episode one. Speaking of names, Brendan, we didn't kind of decide this, but uh, do you have a team name? It's a great question. Uh, is it, it sounds like it's, I don't know. I can't just go Team BR. That sounds too boring. Let's, uh... <laughs> I mean, you got to represent... We can maybe. It's true. We can maybe call it. Uh... I already have a team BR full of amazing great players already. So why would I want to change that? That's very true. That's true. You don't want to bring that team down. Well, maybe, maybe we'll just call it uh, "Living in a Fantasy World." We get creative. Nice. <laughs> Living there in a go. Fantasy World. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. That's so awesome. Got... <laughs> that's going to be hard to put. I'm going to. I'll, I'll admit that's going to be <laughs> pretty. pretty... Pretty hard to put on an Instagram post when I have to put three teams beside each other, but I'll make it work. L I T F W, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. For, for people that don't know, they'll have to come back and watch the episode to get the uh, the full details. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that's your, your team name. So we decided before, because cause last episode was a bit of a, a mismatch, we had a winner and we had two losers, basically. So we decided. I thought we had three winners, is what it was. You guys make a great team. Great team. Isn't that funny the way that we look at things? Yeah, you won an event, I won an event, and Tim won two events. You could call us three winners, but yeah. I look at it that Tim was a winner and we were the two losers. Um, oh. So we decided that you want me to go first. Yep. Brendan is going go to nope, go second. Nope. Brendan's going to go third. Brendan's going to go third, and Jeremy's going to go second. That's right. Okay. Anything else we need to decide on before we start? Hmm. We have team names. We have an order. We have our picks. I think we're ready to rock and roll. All right. So, Team Shambles, all the way from Beaumont, would like to welcome everybody and thank everybody for watching at home. I'm going to step up to the podium with the first overall pick. Team Shambles would like to welcome this player who's been a PDGA member since 2014. Currently mm. 989 rated. Ooh. Playing out of Charlton, Massachusetts. He has 20 career wins. He has played 14 events this year and he has never not cashed. Oh, wow. Team Shambles would like to welcome Samuel Streeter to the team you are going you're pulling like big punches right at the start here daryl you're going big uh, you're not I'm worrying about no canadians prisoners. you're taking these high rated players look at you go i mean that, that's what that's what <laughs> that's what sold it for me is he there practicing already 14 <laughs> events never fin never not cashed that's true yeah that's a that's a good pick and that's also to the thing record. i'm wondering what do you think about this brendan is that if you're 989 rated and you're, you know, you've never not cashed, you're top 10 in 10 of your 14 events, and you're playing in the U.S., does that make it more than if you were playing in Canada? Because there's more people and more competition. Do you think that's a, a stronger number? I would say it's more impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think you'd have to look. He might be blind to the courses in Canada, but he's probably, I would say, generally speaking, um, the rating, if you're, say, playing a PO in U.S. versus Canada, it's probably, like, I'd say at least, like, 30 points difference almost, the entry yeah, point yeah. to that level. That was my well, thinking think as well. The other thing I would think is in chat in mass, I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> how close to the WADA it is. <laughs> but we do know that PEI is going to be at sea level, so we'll see if there's any change in elevation that might affect mr sam's game there sam if you if you win this event and you actually come back to the fantasy episode and, and watch this i apologize for jeremy i'm sorry 
<laughs> you can okay. tell me how bad my accent is. <laughs> so that hands it over to you, Jeremy. Yes. All right. So with Team j with our first pick, we're going to go with a 978 rated player out of Elmer, Ontario. He's played 14 events, won one of them, top 10 at eight of them, was 18th at the rip when top 10 was mostly DGPT pros, sponsored by Discmania, one of the young up-and-comers, nice guy from all of the things I've heard from him, Ezra Lockington, welcome to Team j yeah, that's, that's where you pick. insert applause. I don't know. You guys are always so quiet. I, I wonder if that's because my picks are so good you've got nothing to say or what it is. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a good pick. It's it's probably the highest rated or the most... Um, yeah, you, you guys know how to use the sort function on Excel. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Brendan's got some real good ones. Eh? I like it. I like it. Well, we yeah, no, well... he's he's got to be the um the number one pick for Canada, right? The, for the event. Yeah, I would maybe think not so. the number one pick, but like he's like you said, he's probably the name out of all of the people in the list. He's probably one of the ones that most of us have heard of. Yes, I would think Sponsored so. Sponsored by anyway. Disc Mania, yeah, future yeah. tour disc golf and arc dice, and he just won his first B tier last week, I think, or last month, anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a good pick, Jeremy. I'm not going to take that away from you. There you go. Does B tier translate to A tier? Maybe. Possibly. We'll and also, out. too, he's got to mm-hmm. make that trip from Elmer, Ontario, out to PEI. And I don't know if he's driving or flying. And all those things can come into play, right? Just means he like, knows how to win now. Like, do you remember, too, Daryl? It was one of the players recently. They had driven out to an event. And when they got there their hotel i think it was noah actually maybe noah higgins they got mm-hmm. out to the event him and his mom and the hotel they were supposed to stay at didn't have a room for him and so then oh. they spent the evening driving around trying to find another place to stay and then oh. had to go play a tournament after doing all of that right so little things like that would definitely impact your game i think yeah so hopefully none of that happens ezra hopefully you're there safe and sound <laughs> <laughs> all right so that hands it over to brendan for two picks I also knows how to use Excel, but there is two people tied in ratings for third highest. Okay. But for my notes, I wrote, looks good beside Dylan Gowdy. Yeah. Nice. Rated 974, 159974. Also sponsored by Discmania, OTB, yeah. and Flickline Disc Golf. Nice. Yeah, that's Sick. a good pick. I had found two. So he's played 10 events this year, 1-6 top 10 in three of the other four events. So he's he's right up there always battling for a win. And I'm sure he's going to be doing the same thing as he gets out here. Yeah. Recently just uh, fourth at uh, Iron Leaf. Okay, yeah. Which a lot of these players have just played in Iron Leaf. So, yeah. Yep. Also one of the best named tournaments out there. The My Iron opinion. Leaf. Yeah. yeah, I like yeah, it. I like that. It's no like pork it. pie classic, but... <laughs> it's no <laughs> moose pretzel. No, exactly. <laughs> but it is right up there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you got I'm another pick. Go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and break the ice with my uh, FPO pick. I am going to go ahead and choose at rated 895. Oh, had to be. Karen Martel. Yes. Yeah. Brandon, you did good with your double pick there. Karen was definitely up there for my FPO pick. I've had some uh, Instagram conversations with her and watch her posts and see all the things that she's doing. And she is a force to be reckoned with. She played well at uh, Canadian Nationals last year in Thunder Bay. She was right up in the mix for for that tournament. So definitely a great pick. And, and Mind she... you, I did have a hard time scouting her because my French reading ability is very limited. Different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but and she did win she's also tsa sponsored yeah yes that's correct yeah she recently just won one of my favorite tournaments for a name she just won le jedi open oh <laughs> <Ooh, Le Jedi. laughs> kind of ties back to our previous guest on episode 46 we had chance stad on whose dog is called leia and calls himself chance Backer. so all ties in jeremy it does for sure <laughs> 
And, you know, the other thing I had for Karen was that she was down at Worlds and she placed 77th at Worlds. So I don't know, like, you know, if you're in the top 100 in the world, I mm -hmm. think you're doing pretty good. So, yeah. And if it's not, yeah, if it's only one of her first few times playing, it's not like she's been just going forever. I mean, 2018 might be forever to some people, I guess, or whenever she started. But yeah. Yeah. Just having that experience. Arch Pro is also out there this weekend for lots of stuff here too. And lots of these people maybe haven't been able to play, had the experience playing on camera. So we'll see how that affects some of them as well. Yeah, oh, definitely. That's a good point. Yeah. And we've heard that is a true thing is anybody who, who hasn't played on camera before that first round or at least the first few holes, it takes a bit. But what we have heard at least of the Park Pro guys for sure is that uh, Matt and Andre do a great job at blending into the background. And before you know it, you don't even realize they're there. Yeah, that's what I tell myself when someone has a camera around, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't right, matter. Come... Doesn't matter when you don't show up to a hole seven, or hole five, or hole four. Or... It was hole three. Hole three. <laughs> hole three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so bringing it back to me for my second pick. Okay, you put me in a spot here. Where am mm -hmm. I going to go? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a 953 rated player who's up one point at the last ratings from Apohaki, New Brunswick. <laughs> I think I did pretty good with that, didn't I, Daryl? How you do you did. feel about that? I'm not looking at you. All right, sure. 21 events yeah. this year, 1-7, top 10 in 13, and just one said Iron Leaf tournament. I'm going with Kyle Reed for Team j -Pow. Yeah, that's a good pick. That was my next pick. You kind of read my mind there, Jeremy, so... Yeah, were you thinking the same thing? I'm like, if you're going to play against all a lot of these same competitors in the same tournament and then go out and win it, you've yeah. probably got a good chance to hopefully ride that wave out to the Discmania Open. Yeah, and just the amount of tournaments that he's played in this year. A lot of first place, a lot of podiums. Only finished once outside of the top 10. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, well, he's played this tournament before and um, has experience on this course playing a tournament I saw in 2022 as well at a 944 rating back then. So, right. Also, he loves maple walnut according to Instagram. <laughs> I didn't see that research. one. <laughs> Good job. Wow, well, that's I the think, one thing. I think Brendan's what I got your say. level of stalking this. Yeah, he does for sure. Yeah. What I was going to say, Daryl, was the other thing too, is that's what shows you with sometimes the rating may not be the only way to go by, right? If once you start looking and seeing what they've played, who they've played, when mm -hmm. they've won, that type of thing. Yeah. Have they won recently? All of those other factors that come into play. Speaking from the guy who's got one win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess that hands it back over to me for two picks. That's right. And I just want to take this moment because we didn't address it in the beginning. That's a very nice looking hat you, you're wearing there, uh, Brendan. Oh, thank you. It's one of uh, how many? Three? I don't know. How many of those are there? There were five. five. I'm happy to be yeah. one of five. Yeah. You've got one. Bigger. I've got no one. No better place to wear it than right here. Yeah. That's Jeremy's right. got one. Our friend of the show, Mark Thompson, has one. And if you wa went back and watched episode 46, you'll see that we did a 250 giveaway. For Andre Lauder had one. <laughs> yeah. From Park Pro. He won the 250 subscriber giveaway, but kindly said, you know what, guys? give it away, redo a redraw and give it away to somebody else. So Kevin King, NAGGT tournament director or organizer. He uh, is, is now the proud owner of the, the fifth and final one in this iteration anyway. Yes. And while we're talking about looking good, I think I'm looking Ooh, pretty, yeah. pretty good in my Beautiful. nice jersey here, my nice Falk jersey. I thought about, I thought about wearing that myself, but then I thought, hmm, yeah, that's might too be, matching. I got that, it might be I like too to much think awesome. I'm somewhere in the middle. I kind of have like Jeremy's hairline, and I kind of <laughs> am starting to grow like Daryl's facial you hair. Just, you know, put me put me in the middle. I can't go too much one way. Exactly. There you go. All right. So with that loveliness out of the way, I'm going to pick from Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Currently 964 rated, up three points. This person has played in 110 career events. Wow. Was 123 of them. We are going to welcome to the team Chris Richard. Nice. 
Yeah, as you're saying, like 12 events this year, 1-1, one, one, top 10 and 10. Mm-hmm. And I, you know what I put as my other note there, Daryl, was I was like a five-digit PDGA number. I think that's, that's something it. too. Exactly. Yeah. And then we were talking about Iron Leaf. He came runner-up. He came second at Iron Leaf just recently. So, yeah. Well, that's a great that's pick. And you got All that disc golf is probably why he last posted on Instagram in 2021. <laughs> But not Instagram. It's hard exactly. For information. He's got no time for Instagram. He's practicing. That's right. With my third overall pick. Yeah, my third overall pick. I think I'm going to go with another five-digit PDGA number, Jeremy. Okay. Currently 899 rated. Mm. This player has been a member since 2016, has played 73 career events, out of Nashua, New Hampshire, Team Shambles would like to welcome Rose Shurtick to the team. Yeah, another good and pick that's my for sure. MP, uh, my FPO pick. That's right. New Hampshire, though, I'm I'm not good with my American geography. So if uh, Rose is listening, you're not good I'm with your American sure accents either. There. <laughs> is it up there? Is it closer to the north, or is she coming it's from up, quite it's a up ways? in that northeast? Yeah, yeah, it's up in that. Uh, Okay, up so PEI is kind of in the neck of the woods. I know Maine yeah. and Vermont are up there. Connecticut's up, up there. Area. Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah, okay. There you go. All right, so no no, no uh, jet lag or no driving, tiring no, or anything. Not coming like from that. Denver or something, no. No, so good pick. That was She was definitely on my list for sure as well. I just didn't know the accent to do for New Hampshire, so I didn't feel like I should pick that one. That's so fine. I've got all the other accents done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that brings it back to me. I'm going to finish off my MPO picks with a 974 rated player who is up two points, also from Charlottetown PEI. So they got to know this course. That's probably one of their local ones because from what I understand is is what, two hours to drive from one tip of the island to the other at most, something like Mm -hmm. that. So 12 12 events this year, one six, top 10 in the other five. I'm welcoming James Mallard to the show. Or to the show, I guess to the team. To Team to J-Bow. Team. <laughs> <laughs> he also played the tournament here in 2022, finishing 33rd with a 952 rating. Oh, uh, there you go. Played league here as well. Finished first at the fall 2023 East League. So yeah. he knows the course. He plays the course here. Right. And then also did play last year as well in the Silver Series and finished 29th. Yeah, I think James has got some pretty good with the last year. I'm getting a bit nervous now of Brendan. He he actually has done his research. That's right. He didn't just sort with Excel. Yeah. (laughs) I think he might be a bit of a dark horse. It's maybe more credit than I deserve, but I might have skipped a little bit of your uh, podcast to get a little extra studying it, but I can always go back and follow that later. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Always available afterwards on uh, YouTube or (laughs) Instagram. Spotify or Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. So we got yeah, so you, now, you got to tell me the name of Brendan's team again. Team Fantasy for Life in the World. What was it? <laughs> uh, something like that. Okay, I wasn't saying anything because I was hoping Brendan would remember, but I don't remember either. <laughs> life of Fantasy? I'll remember. Fantasy World of Fantasy? Living a Fantasy Life? Living a yes. Fantasy World? Living a Fantasy Life? Living in the yeah. Fantasy World? Maybe later in the fantasy world is what I said. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, you get another swing here of two picks to finish off your picks. So what oh, are you boy. starting with? Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. It's your final two picks. All right. Let's take a look here. What's the command for sort? Or like... <laughs> I just have it built all into my algorithm here that I've put together. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're there an you Excel go. wizard. A wizard, someone... yes. As someone who is called Team Shambles, Daryl should be able to give you some advice when you get into a situation like this. <laughs> this is normally where Jeremy's like, yeah, fantasy t- uh, podcast, silence, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot of silence for, uh, for a okay. visual podcast or an audio we're, podcast. We're filling in. That's right. I think what I'm going to do here, guys, is go with a 959 rated player who played in the tournament here in 2022. 
uh, plays league here and also finished 31st last year of the Silver Series, I will be choosing Vaughn Murphy. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's a good pick. That's an it's interesting too pick. Much, too much course experience. He might not have the highest rating, but he's... Yeah. By all, by all accounts, he has the experience on this course, so I think that should do him quite well. And I missed out. That's a, that's a sleeper pick for me or a dark horse pick because I didn't have Vaughn, so it's going to be exciting to see where he ends up. That just goes to show experience because he was on my list. So, you know, people, oh, people you who know, know. <laughs> Vaughn can come <laughs> you out. Know, you know. He's now he's got a reason to play that Jeremy guy on that fantasy podcast. He didn't even put me on his list. Come on. <laughs> I'll show him. I did notice that he didn't play that many events. He played six events this year, a um, couple of C tiers and league. But like Brendan was saying there, having the experience of playing the course, that could mean a lot more than just, you know, having, you know, we know he's playing. He's not just playing these events and not you know, putting his bag away until the next event. He's playing leagues. He's playing practice rounds. And if this is where he's play playing, yes, that could be a good sign for, you know, he might do well in the tournament because he's just going to know how the course plays, right? Well, and he's going to have his local lines. And the other thing too is he's going to mm -hmm. know if the wind is up, where to throw. He's not going to have to figure yeah. it out. So back to you. Leaves you with, yeah, your final pick. And yeah. I think you are left My with one more MPO player. That's right. I am. My final choice, one of the final uh, sponsored players I like from what I could find, sponsored by TSA C1, She Dives Her Discs, and a future engineer, 952 rated, and Tony, Ri I don't know if it's Richard or Richard. Yeah, I, I was going to go with that one. I'm like, when, and also from Dieppe, so I was like, Atony Richard, that would be my pronunciation. <laughs> That's, I would assume that there is some French persuasion in the pronunciation of that. Antony Richard. Yeah. Maybe not that heavy, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, he also played, he played in this tournament, or similar tournament in 2022 as a MA1, uh, 935 mm -hmm. rated event. And then he also um, played, I guess it would have been in 2023, in the Discmania Open Pro Masters and Amateur event. Finished first, 941 oh. rating in that. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good pick. He definitely made my list for sure. Well, it brings me team j pow back to our final pick and we need mm -hmm. an fpo player to round out this team mm -hmm. and i have an 886 rated player from dartmouth nova scotia played in nine events this year and lit it up in fa1 last year has been competing in ma1 this year as well and placing well in ma1 this is their first fpo event we're welcoming tannis trainer to this team mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that she probably has the biggest Instagram following of all these people. I can't guarantee oh. it because I couldn't look at everyone, but she has almost 4,000 followers. Oh, wow. That's it's, awesome. Uh, tea train or something. I think I've probably been following her for two or three years, I would say. Really? There you but go. But she does a whole bunch of work out there, yeah. Well, and I, that was... That was my thought when I was looking. You know, you'd say, okay, well, is this person, their rating is, you know... 10 to 15 points lower than Karen and Rose's. But at the same time, I'm like, when you're playing an MA1 and you're placing well against some of the players who are going to be in there with maybe some real big arms and you're competing and still placing up near the top, then, you know, you're getting a lot of good experience that you're going to bring to this event. So I think this will be a great she, FPO showing for her. Yeah. And she's big enough in the scene that of this whole list, she is the only person I followed on Instagram. So. Yeah, I don't there know. you go. She looks like she's doing a lot of good work out there anyway, community. So high praise. You got the owner of a disc golf team and a disc golf store following you. I think that's pretty good good praise. Yeah. All the way out from Camrose, Alberta. Do you even remember how you came across her? Like she just it was like uh -huh. a suggested follow, or did you hear from her from somebody else? I can't remember where I would have followed her from. But I've hmm. definitely um like she's in lots of different like community posts stuff right um she posts quite regularly and stuff so yeah Good yeah community advocate awesome follow. i think it's like yeah. t train on instagram or something like that right all right so that rounds it out to me for the final pick and i'm rounding out my mpo picks i'm gonna choose somebody 
who was quite high on my list. I'm not going to lie. He was probably fifth or sixth on my list and nobody took him and I was kept waiting for his name to go. But he's from Halifax, Nova Scotia. He's been a member mm. since 2020. Currently 953 rated, up three points in the last update. 73 career events, 14 career wins. Has played 23 events. That was one of the reasons why <laughs> I picked. It, what was, I thought he would be a good pick was because he's got a lot of consistency. He, he's playing a lot. A lot of A tiers, a lot of B tiers, a lot of league. Fifth at Iron Leaf, but he just won the Schoolhouse Open presented by Infinite Discs. Team Shambles would like to welcome Chris Bork to the team. Yes. I think you're going to fit in very nicely over here. Yeah, you're, you're right, Daryl. Someone who's played 23 events in one year. That's like an event every weekend, right? If you think about it. Pretty much. If you said I mean, four, he had four leagues four in there month. as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess leagues in there. But still, that's amazing. So he's got to be on 21. top of his game yeah. at this point. Or he's seriously injured and this is the end of the season. But I think he's going to be playing super well. And he's going to take a, do a good showing for Team Shambles there. Mm -hmm. yeah, one thing that trying to get really consistently what I've seen. Yeah. There's ratings and stuff as well. Yeah. One thing that just did kind of strike me funny is his first event of the year. It was uh, the New Year's at HP DGC in 2024. He placed third and he cashed. Do you know how much yeah. he cashed? How much? I don't know how much it was to enter the event, but he cashed and he got $8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It may, may have just paid for his gas to get home. I'm not sure, but. Hey, uh -oh. it doesn't matter how much it is as long as you say you cash, right? That's fantastic. Go home to your partner and say, yeah, I made some money this okay. event. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna quit my job. I'm yeah. going to just disc golf because okay. there's money in it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> if that didn't sell it, the $15 pay a day that next, a few weeks later might have done it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I almost yeah. doubled my money. You know what? That's more than I've made playing disc golf in my entire career. And Absolutely. it might be more than I ever make. So, yeah, yeah. I agree. There you go. No, that's one of those things is any, any uh, prize money is good prize money. So, Yeah. All right, there you and go. I don't know Our you teams are but all these, all these sponsored events kind of makes me want to go try. Uh, I saw one here when I was scrolling through. The, uh, oh, man, now just be Propeller Brewing Company presents Capital City Cup. All yeah. these names like this sponsored by these companies makes me want to go uh, partake, if you know what I'm saying. I know what you're I saying. what they have to offer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking through the divisions here. They look like they didn't even have an MA40 division. Well, then I guess they event. need us out there. Yeah. Right, Daryl? We can, two people makes a division, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's also, he also played 11 events before summer started. So that's impressive. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's, that's the commitment. That's hey, like, you, uh, you guys didn't pick him. Don't complain to me now. He's a good pick. No. He's a good sleeper pick. I'm just complimenting your final pick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be happy when he when he comes in fourth place behind my three picks there. <laughs> well, speaking when of your three you, picks, when he gets you that one point, we'll be really happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the one point I need. Okay, so speaking of the picks, let's go over our teams. So let's do a recap. I picked first. So straight off the bat, I picked Sam Streeter. Chris Richard, Chris Bork, and my FPO pick was Rose Schertick. I think it's a pretty solid team. Jeremy, you went second. Yes, and I've got Ezra Lockington, Kyle Reed, James Mallard, and then my FPO pick is Tannis Trainer. And I went third, and I chose, first off, Dylan Goody, followed by my FPO pick, I believe, of Karen Mar Martel, followed by Vaughn Murphy and Anthony Richard. Yes, there you I go. I like it. Jeremy likes an accent. I do. I love, especially if I do it properly. I don't like it when I get it wrong, as you know, right? I like it, and that's why you go out to those people for me and make sure that we get the correct pronunciation, Fritia Farga Green. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> as the example. And and who is a friend of the show, the person that hangs around with Nick Culver and Daisy? What's his name? Miguel Alvarado. <laughs> you can't tell Jeremy a name of somebody and he just say it normally. Wherever the person's from, he has to put on the accent of where that person is from. I like it. Yeah. I can, and what I, I do, can definitely what... follow with the Spanish accent. 
Can you? Yeah, you can, you, you can you, roll you your R's? In Mexico. <laughs> oh, because I can speak Spanish. Well, oh. I, I say I can speak Spanish. Was it Mexico? I that do you love lived? a good accent. You lived in Mexico we did, for yeah, a while? I lived yeah. in Baja, California. Yeah. Nice. nice. So then is it, how did I do? Is that right? Did I do okay with Miguel's name? I, I loved your attempt. It was wonderful. No, it was pretty good. I think you've I think you've had a little bit of practice. I've heard you pronouncing it like that for about I don't know, what twenty yeah, episodes now or something. Episodes, something yeah. like that. Yeah, ever since yeah. he's come on. <clears throat> All right. So with the picks in, we've got our teams locked. So what we do now is we're going to put our team picks out on Instagram. They will be up by Friday. Vote on your favorite team for a chance to win. A BR Disc Golf gift card, which we greatly appreciate, Brendan, for supplying to the Fantasy League. <laughs> but if you want an extra ballot into the team, leave your own team in the comments. Jeremy always likes to say, and if you on YouTube as well, you can always put your, your uh, team in the comments on YouTube. Go to Instagram. If you're on Facebook and you want to vote on Facebook or put your comments on Facebook, we're, we're going to count these votes now. So make sure that we include everybody in our who has a chance to uh, vote. That's right. And if you get to one of those posts and you don't see the vote button there, then just put it in the comments. That's how we'll make sure that you are counted. And uh, as you can see, we all think we have a great team. Let's let you decide who's got the best team. Yeah. Once again, we appreciate Brendan being a sponsor of the show, BR Disc Golf. BRDiscGolf.ca if you would like to order discs. Rundle League is finished now, so the the easy drop-off, I'm guessing, is ended. It is going to be ended, yes. But yeah. we will do our best to get stuff to you as good as we can. Maybe uh, when you win that $10 gift card, just maybe uh, send us a message if you're putting in an order. Maybe you want a sticker or something. We'll throw something in. Nice. Until That's next awesome. time that we're able to see you in person anyway. Yeah. That's right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Brendan, for uh, your time. We and we need your help of this now, episode. Brendan, right? What's that? You need we, my help. We do yes. need Brendan. So I got the hat. Well, yeah, we I was it. just going to say, um, no, I lost where I was going. You interrupted me. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I was going to say, uh, pay attention or stay tuned for episode 47, where we'll do a recap of this episode. Yes, where we've already got both tournament directors lined up to join us. And then we're looking to get the FPO and MPO winners that are likely from Team JPOW. We'll get to have them on and see how uh, happy they are to have been on Team JPOW when they won. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Let's Thanks, just, Brendan, for showing up. Let's just hope the winners were selected by one of us, at least. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. How do we well, end Darryl, it, Jeremy? There's only one way to end one of these shows. We there's, have to of course do it this only way, one right? End. We have to. There's no other way it could happen. Brendan, are you ready? I'm ready. Then we should. Chain out! Chain out! <laughs> <laughs>